my late husband passed away in September of 2015. He died by suicide and um, we also lost a student in the department not long after that to suicide. Sadly, the outcome for mental illness can be death by suicide. It doesn't have to be. There was a very close in, unexpected death in my family. As a parent managing your, the impact on your children and then managing an estate and, and all these things. And at the same time, you've got to come and give your A game and perform. I'd never had a situation like this where I just kind of looked into my life toolbox and I didn't have any tools. Being an educator and faculty member can be very rewarding, but even something you love, especially a demanding career, can begin to take a toll on your mental wellness. On any given week, more than 500,000 Canadians will not go to work because of mental illness. We're all one life event away from finding ourselves needing supports and services. All of us here on campus have our own backgrounds, have our own stressors, uh, ethnic minorities, gender, they do play a role. They play into who we are and the challenges that we have. As chair of a department, I have to realize in my role, I've had the wind at my back my entire career, that I have not faced the challenges that other people have. Minorities, women, especially in engineering, face challenges that I will never know about. I have to recognize that they're there. All of our senior leaders, all people in positions of authority should recognize that their experience may be very different from somebody else's experience in their career and be willing to listen and think about the challenges that others have faced. If we can do that, truly try to appreciate what other people have gone through and continue to face in their careers, then we might have an understanding and be able to offer support as required. We have to actually teach class and then research and then we have service obligations and then faculty meetings, all of these things. And then at the end of the day, just like we have to go home to our families and we have obligations there as well. And you do need to be, um, you know, in good mental health to be able to actually accomplish those things and go home and, you know, be good to your family as well. Faculty members face a variety of unique stressors that impact our mental wellness including the competition for grant funds, the competition to attract high quality graduate students, uh, our performance in the classroom, which is going to be rated by undergraduate students, uh, our year over year assessment, which is implicitly in competition with our peers. This means many of us are working extraordinarily hard. So we're close to the edge. It's really easy for, at least from a faculty point of view, for people to kind of fall into silos and you can find yourself alone a lot. As faculty, we have very limited interaction with others because we're in class or then we're in our office. Um, we don't have a lot of meeting opportunities with other members of staff. Most new faculty members, they don't, they're not necessarily from here. They're not from Alberta, they're not from Edmonton. So they're moving away from family and friends. You don't have a lot of camaraderie, maybe even while you're at the university, but then you're going home and you might not even have family around or friends around to really support you. Faculty members are in an interesting position where they're not only dealing with their work stresses, they also have the added component of dealing with students. Sometimes we're suffering with pressure from aging parents or younger children. If you're on contract, you don't want to appear weak. You're cognizant that maybe my contract won't be renewed if I don't handle everything. You just want to keep it together, like, I'm good, I got this, even if some days you haven't got it. The best thing that we can do is reach out. Reach out to services on campus, reach out to services off campus. We can't try to do it alone. Counseling and Clinical Services offers psychological and psychiatry services for students, as well as consultation services and training opportunities for staff. When a faculty or staff member comes to one of our workshops, they can expect that they'll be able to interact with the psychologist who will be presenting information and mostly teaching about the topic. 
The Employee and Family Assistance Program views individuals as holistic human beings. The program consists of nutritional counseling, fitness consultation. With the community social work team, we can support faculty members if they're having concerns supporting students, whether it's a sexual violence disclosure or if they're having suicidal ideations, and they don't know what to do. The faculty member doesn't know where to go with that disclosure, how to hold it. We can offer support. So it's the university's goal to always provide psychological services for faculty members and their families and dependents. The important thing to remember is that if you don't find what you're looking for, it doesn't feel right or comfortable initially, that you don't stop. Because we can't give to others and support others if we are not full ourselves, if we're not healthy and well ourselves. The university and faculty members can really help assist one another and other members of the campus community um, by continuing to be empathetic, compassionate, um, kind. It's just a simple reminder of turning towards each other instead of turning away. So if you notice that a colleague is having a bad day, oftentimes we'll turn away and sort of assume that it'll be okay, we'll let them deal with it on their own. And we like to try to encourage people to lean in and to turn towards each other and ask what's going on. Taking an opportunity to walk a mile in someone else's shoes. As academics, there absolutely is a badge of honor of working late into the evening, working through the weekends. I am fortunate enough to be at this point in my career when I can go, that's wrong. <laughs> There's important things in our lives and we have to pay attention to those important things. Our family, our friends, the goals, our values, things we really want to strive for. It's not important to be working at midnight Please, get your rest, get your sleep. You're in it for a marathon, not a sprint. You are our mentors. You teach us how to be future influencers in our fields and to be better problem solvers in order to uplift the whole people. But what you don't realize is you also teach us how to care for ourselves and how to function in academia with those around us. You are important and we want you to be as healthy as you can be. We wish we could change the culture for you right now so that neglecting self-care wasn't seen as something that makes you a better academic. We can make the change for you, but we can support you as you begin to shift the culture from one where badges of honor are given to those academics who have work-life balance, not to those who neglect it. We need to continue to reduce stigma. We even need to change the way we talk about mental health. We have to be active in our own recovery. Whatever works for you is gonna be right for you.